Thanks everybody, thanks for coming. It's really great to be in Phoenix, my first time in Phoenix. And I wanna thank the Desperado LGBT Film Festival and Pride and for having us and um, I'm gonna be here along with my costume designer and production designer to answer any questions you have after the film. And I will talk to you more then, thank you. We are all rooting for you to be heterosexual, Jill. You know what I did? I made a date with my ex-girlfriend. One last fling with her and I never looked back. Hi. I came up with a plan that's going to solve all of my problems. I just think that maybe I can help her. You just want to get into her pants. Have you found anyone desperate enough to date you yet? Yes, I did. Rule well, number one, I call the shots. What's that? It's a rose. Try again. Rule well, number two, first base only. Really like this really close to each other as a test of full power. Rule number three, no means no. No, don't. Okay, no. Please. You know what that means? No. No. Ready, please. Oh, you have a better idea? I do. Yeah. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. Ow! <laughs> yeah. Ruby. It's very nice. It rhymes with food. What does everybody think I'm gay? And what am I gonna say? I just don't wanna say it. You guys are dumb. It's just my love. I'm calling for you. Let me fall. Don't flatter yourself. All you dykes look the same. But that was a nice Jane. Good job, Jill. We did good. <laughs> The, um, and, and for those of you who may not know, I did a film called Butch Jamie, and Butch Jamie's actually a prequel of sorts to this movie, um, but I don't, I don't say, oh, this is a sequel, because I, I like to think that each movie stands on its own, like you don't need to see the first movie to appreciate the second movie, but um, if you like this movie, maybe you would like Butch Jamie, it's, um, it's out there on Netflix DVD, and you can stream it, you can rent it through YouTube, and anyway. So that's that little tidbit. <laughs> Quiet group. Um, I, uh, fortunately, I don't. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. I did, yeah. <laughs> um, it took me a long time. It doesn't usually take me this long. It actually took me three years. Um, I've written other scripts. It took me about a year for other scripts. It just kind of depends on what else I'm working on. I don't write full time. I do a lot of other stuff. Um, but we shot it in um, 10 days, which is a pretty quick shoot. It's a very low budget production, so we shot it in 10 days and um, then spent a few months in post-production uh, pulling it all together. Yeah, that was cute. And the, um... <clears throat> oh, here we go. Um, what did it feel like kissing uh, Cameron Diaz? <laughs> I know. A lot of people say that. I, I, I hear Cameron Diaz and like Julia Roberts. Um, you know, it's as everyone says. Like, I mean, it's it's awkward. Like, there's people, mostly guys, hanging around watching you like kiss each other. And she's straight, you know. And I was like the first woman she's ever kissed. And um, but you know, it's like it's like with anything. It's like you know, you get to know each other, you get comfortable, you trust each other. And we developed a nice rapport and a nice chemistry that I think is believable on screen. And people tell me that that really comes across in the movie and kind of sells their relationship, which I think is nice. In, in what sequence did you film the, the, the movie? Um, what sequence we filmed it? Well, let me think. Um, we actually, a lot of it, you know, with um, when you break down the movie, like with the schedule, it kind of depends on availability of the actors, availability of the locations. Um, it worked out that um, the first two days was just the scenes with Jill and myself in the apartment. Um, the third day, I remember, we shot the, um, the reclaiming your lesbianism stuff, which ended up being the end of the movie. Um, then we shot the onset stuff with the cat and the other actors, and then we took a we took a week off. We did five days, took a week off, and then we came back, and we shot. Um, 
It's, it was kind of a blur, it was a while ago, actually. Um, anyway, we shot the club, the whole day at the club, and the ex, um, the ex-lesbian stuff, and the Jose David Dinner stuff, and um, yeah. But I liked the idea, even though the Jamie and Jill stuff, that some of those scenes were very challenging, I liked the idea of shooting those first um, to sort of establish that relationship. And even though acting-wise those che- scenes may have been challenging, there wasn't a lot, because you know, I, I work behind, you know, I'm, a, I'm the director, I'm one of the producers, and there's a lot going on in some of the scenes, so I'm like, oh, the club stuff I want later, and the scenes with all the other actors in the meeting rooms I want later, and so the first two days was just the two of us and just focusing on that and getting that right before we brought in all these other elements. I have a question for both of you. How long before you start shooting you spend planning? Um, I think about two months. And again, I mean, I, 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 I have another full-time job, so it's kind of uh, piecemeal. It's not even two months full-time. So it's relatively quick. And we got, I think we got lucky with the casting. We did about two weekends of casting. And um, if we didn't, like, because Jill was the main big component, and we I feel very lucky that we found her as soon as we did. And if we didn't, I think we would have had to keep looking maybe for a while. but. And for set designs, David? Um, it was pretty quick, but it's interesting that you bring this up because she's planning a follow-up to this film, and we've been talking about it all weekend, things we're gonna do for the next film, actually. So it's hard to say when you start, because you're always working on it, if that makes any sense. So, yeah. <laughs> Did I answer that at all? Yes. And I'll, and I'll actually, while you mention it, I'll. I'll or I'll actually say something about the follow-up. Um, I'm doing a third installment of the series called s and Sally, um, which I think is gonna be fun and edgy and outrageous. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks. Um, and uh, so anyway, uh, Jamie and Jill go start exploring s and clubs, and Lola and David start dating the same man. So it'd be kind of fun. We wanna, I wanna shoot that later this year if all goes well, so. Yeah, hopefully we'll be back here, and not next year, but the year after. I have a question for you. Um, What was the inspiration for this movie? The inspiration, you said? Um, You know, it really was because when I did Butch Jamie, Butch Jamie is like, just really quickly, it's like a lesbian twist on Tootsie, where I play a butch lesbian actress who gets cast as a man in a film. And that original, I'll just start back there because it kind of goes into this. That original inspiration, I think, just came from, I wanted to explore gender and gender issues and being a butch lesbian in Los Angeles. And I'm not the kind of actor that actually goes out on auditions, so a lot of that was not based on my life, even though people thought it was. Um, But anyway, so that kind of explored gender issues. And then um, Jill and Jamie date in that movie, and you can kind of guess how that kind of worked out. And then um, I liked the idea of then this installment, because that was like a satire of gender, taking this installment like a satire in sexuality and exploring sexuality. But what interested me too was not just the main plot with Jill and the ex-lesbian thing, I liked exploring sexuality from different points in the spectrum and bringing like Jamie into it as a butch lesbian. Like, okay, she's a butch lesbian. What if we showed her also kind of freaking out about penis, which I think was kind of funny and you don't see that in, and just like a little, you know, that's like one of the only things that People say, oh, is any of this based in real life? And none of it is, except I did have a series of weird dreams about penises. I'm like, this is interesting, and I'm gonna put it, what? (laughs) And um, so anyway, so I pulled that in the movie to kind of explore from different sides of the spectrum. And you have something to add? (laughs) Well, I do, but I don't think you want me to. Oh, yeah, okay. (laughs) Any more questions? (laughs) <laughs> Nobody? Nobody asked you how much it costs to make the film. Oh, they know better. <laughs> um, the film is, is a very, it's a very low budget film, and I'm sure you get this a lot, like, we're not publicizing the number of the film. Sorry. But, um, <laughs> okay. I, I didn't ask you. I said nobody asked you. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question about the film within the film. Mm-hmm. So, was it a mockumentary about cats? Or can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, well, 
It's a mockumentary about cat actors, and I know it's like very random, like what the hell are they doing? It's, um, and that's kind of the way it's just is. It's just like, there's no other real story that you're missing. It's just, it's just like, oh, wouldn't it be funny and random, like just these weird costumes coming through. Um, that's kind of story about that. But people are like, I want to see that movie. Will you make that movie? Which is a fun idea. I don't, I don't actually think that's going to happen, but it's a fun idea to think about. Yeah. I have a question up here. Um, how, when did you start this, um, this whole film thing? I'm sorry, what's that? How, um, when did you start making the, uh, the film? When did it, we work on the film? Yeah. Um, well, we shot it. It was, it's actually been a while ago we shot it. It's almost been two years since we shot it. Um, and then spent a while in post-production and then submitting to festivals and then premiering. We premiered on the festival circuit last June and then have been on the festival circuit for um, about seven months, eight months, and then we'll continue to play through the summer with a DVD and VOD digital release, probably around the fall. Yeah, so that kind of answered my question. My question was gonna be like, what opportunities have you had to view the film, and then hopefully you've had some profitability with the budget and everything that you've had, so you've been making money doing your filming as well. Well, thanks, yeah, hopefully. I mean, I think at this stage, I feel lucky, I would feel lucky to recoup my budget enough to then make the next film to basically sustain that. Um, it's, it'd be great to make a living doing it, but it's not, like on the indie level, that's not really realistic, you know what I mean? So it's really just, I wanna recoup the money so I can make the next one and kinda keep going with it. Yeah. Hi, um, I had a question about the movie within the movie. How did you come up with all your different costumes? They were hysterical. <laughs> oh, credit to David, go ahead. Hey, um, I just liked all those costumes. <laughs> <laughs> and I was lucky that she went there with it, with it, because she was really, I don't think you beat out any of the costumes I came up with, huh? Yeah, all the costumes, all my ideas ended up in the film. I. Basically, it's me thinking like, wouldn't it be funny if Michelle wore that? <laughs> and you have to admit, do you, you remember the scene where she's wearing all the pink and then she turns yes, around? Yes, the sequin with the, in the She's silver. working those sparkle booties, wasn't she? <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, it's just all the stuff I thought was funny. And, and the thing that was so amazing is the way she delivers her lines in the costumes I thought was so great. Yeah. And if that's what made it. It was a great the, combination. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Actually, I have a corollary to that. How did you get the cat to stay so compliant? Oh, well, the cat actually was kind of an older cat, so I think it just sort of like laid there. There was one scene at the beginning, if you remember, like we did have the cat on the leash, and the cat ran away, but that was kind of funny, and we have that on screen, and Lola's kind of chasing the cat, but because I scared the cat with the tricycle. But, but also, just so no one thinks we were abusing the cat, after a while, the cat really liked it because we all, you know, pet the cat and handle the cat, and the cat would just kind of sit there and purr. So the cat really liked it, I think. Actually, we didn't, we didn't do anything bad. With the cat. <laughs> anything else? Anybody? I'm gonna ask Michelle and David if they would uh, exit out um, into the lobby outside, and I'm sure a lot of people will ask you questions out there, and maybe take a few pictures. Would you join us in the lobby? Sure, that'd be okay. great. Then I'm going to ask you to hustle your bustle over to the door and get out there before everybody else, because oh, okay. they'll want to stop you. Thank you, there. guys. Thank you very much.